federal government have some private sector for research commercialization. APC presidential candidate picks Kazim Shatima as running mate. Plus updates from the world of sport. Hello, good evening, and thanks for joining us on Channel 12 News tonight. My name is Idarisit Adedo. There is a renewed advocacy for the private sector in Nigeria to key into efforts of taking various research findings and innovations of research institutes off the shelves for commercialization that will translate to economic development of the country. This time, attention is being drawn to the Shela Science and Technology Complex Abuja, where several research results of importance have remained unharnessed for mass production. We need details of the report in our subsequent bulletin. Presidential candidate of the APC, Ashua Jibola Metinobu, has formally confirmed the former governor of Bruno State. Senator Kazim Shetima as his running mate for the 2023 presidential election. Ashura Tinubu disclosed this while speaking to newsmen after paying Salah homage on President Muhammad Bari at his Dara residence in Castina State. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports. We sincerely apologize for the loss of audio in that report. Muslim faithful in Imeko joined their counterparts from across the world to observe this year's Eid prayer at the Akbata Eid ground. Chief Imam of Imeko, Shaikh Abdul Majid Abdul Karim, enjoined Nigerians to emulate Prophet Ibrahim by keeping their promises. Correspondent Tope Alabi reports. Muslim faithful in Imeko and its environs converged on Apata Eid praying ground to observe the traditional two rakat prayer led by the chief Imam Abdul Mujib Abdul Karim. <laughs> Calling on Muslims to sow seeds of love and be ready to sacrifice their endowments for the good of others. Imam Abdul Mujib extolled the virtues of Prophet Ibrahim, who fulfilled his promise to Allah during adversity and advised both leaders and followers not to reneg on their promises. We must fulfill our promises because when we have faith in Allah, we will be compelled to be good to others. Let us also continue to enjoy that we have peace, tranquility in our country, in our state, among ourselves. You know, across 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 religion, so that our country continues to progress. I all just, if you promise, try to fulfill your promise. This festival is just for us to be happy and appreciate Almighty Allah for His kindness. Muslims thereafter returned to their various homes to slaughter the symbolic ram in compliance with the tenets of Islam. In Meko, Tope Alabi, NTA News. In the meantime, the defense headquarters has ascribed as false allegations credited to former aviation minister Femi Fani Kayode that the military has was informed of the Koje prison attack and that of the Abuja Kaduna train incident by the Department of State Services, but no action was taken. He further alleged that the soldiers on duty at Koje Correctional Facility were withdrawn shortly before the attack. A statement by the defense spokesperson, Major General Jimmy Apple, says in all the allegations, Femi Fanny Kayode is merely playing to the gallery and that he is not in any position to know whether 
the DSS notified the military of any attack or not. The statement adds that a claim that soldiers were withdrawn from the Koje Correctional Custodial Center before the attack is laughable and sad that Mr. Karadi is ignorant of whose responsibility it is to guard correctional centers. On further claim that the military took no action on the recent Shiro terrorist attack, which resulted in the death of security personnel, the defense headquarters says it is also an attempt to smear the military and create bad blood among the security agencies. The defense headquarters urges members of the public to ignore the cook-up stories of Femi Fanny Coyote and continue to remain vigilant and report suspicious activities promptly to law enforcement agencies. In the meantime, attempts by a suspected human trafficker to export illicit drug to Dubai, United Arab Emirates and planting sink in the luggage of an orphan recruited for a phantom job in the Arab nation has been thwarted by NDLE operatives at the Lagos airport. The suspect was arrested on Wednesday 6 July following the interception of his victim whom he was alleged to have planted 50 parcels of cannabis concealed in food items in her luggage. It is also recorded that 47 wraps of cocaine meant for Algeria was also intercepted in Ibadan, along with two suspects following an intelligence shared by the Department of State Services. Meanwhile, five suspects were arrested across Uyo, Oyo, Akwaibom, and Edo State with different quantities of illicit substances such as tramadol, meat, heroin, cannabis, and crack cocaine. The NNPC Limited says it is not recruiting. A statement by Gabardin Mohammed, Group General Manager, Group Public Affairs Division. NNPC Limited urged the public to take note. The statement said whenever the company intends to recruit, announcements will be made using the company's official website, www.nnpcgroup.com, verified Twitter handle at NNPC Group verified Facebook page at NNPC Group and other credible media channels. To this effect, he said, any information suggesting that NNPC Limited is recruiting is false and should be disregarded. Mrs. Olainka Akimbawale, a former staff of the Nigerian Television Authority in Tiabokuta, has celebrated her diamond age with special thanksgiving and appreciation to God for messages received over the years. Anthony Gandona has details of the events held at Olomori Housing Estate at Belkota. It was an atmosphere of joy and happiness as family members, friends and well-wishers came from far and near to celebrate Mrs. Olayika Nike Akimbawali, who clocked 60. In a short exhortation, Engineer Joseph Oyeshiku and the head of Adebayi family, Chief Shebun Adebayi, described the celebrants as an embodiment of love and humility who impacted the society positively. It is very humble. Then, so you are having points in your family. She is stepping stone or a different point for all the ladies who are born after her. Guests and children of the celebrants say Mrs. Yinka Akimbowale is a disciplinarian and a jolly good fellow. She is uh, my pillar, my prayer warrior, my confidence. Because she can, she was even after that time, she was able to study. So I, I don't know. I'm not sure about what's going to be doing. Especially the advice she gave me that day. If I had my mother living, my mother wouldn't have given me a better advice than she did. She is a mother. She is a uh, reliable. You can confine with her before anything with her. The celebrant who could not hide her joy returns all glory to God Almighty who made it possible for her to attain the diamond age. There are so many things that has happened, but to God be the glory, I'm still alive. That I attain this age, 
uh, it is to the glory of God. The high point of the event was the cutting of anniversary cake. <laughs> Mrs. Olayin Kaani Keyakimbo Ali, who was a staff of NTA Adokuta for many years, retired from the service of NTA as Assistant Manager Administration, NTA Ibadan Network Center. In Abokuta, Anthony Grandon, NTA News. A big congratulations to the celebrant. The family of late Mrs. Tolami Abebudu converged on Holy Trinity Anglican Church, Ikirikwa Abokuta, to celebrate the impactful life of the deceased whose memories are difficult to forget even after a decade of her demise. Anthony Grandon has details of the report. members, friends and well-wishers converged on the church to appreciate God for the impactful life of the deceased 10 years after her demise. Venerable Julius Odebumi of the Holy Trinity Anglican Church Ikiriku Abokuta churched the congregation to live a good life worthy of emulation which would ensure that their name will not be forgotten after their sojourn on earth. We need to understand that we have records, not in the church alone, even in heaven. And the book of records is just to let us understand that every work of woman on earth will definitely be remembered, not even on earth alone, even in heaven. Speaking on the legacies of the deceased, some family members say her memory will continue to linger on in their minds. It has not been so enjoyable, but the glory of God, we are still existing. It is God that is keeping us alive and the children together. She dominates our discussion and she shapes our decision in many ways. Do absent, still near, uh, very dear, uh, very missed. Uh, we are only consoled that uh, in her lifetime she opted to be bold, uh, daring and courageous. I wish we could even do more because when she was alive she had a great legacy. She was a woman of great impact in lives of people. She, she needs to be immortalized, she needs to be remembered for good. Others in their tribute say, let me see Idomi impacted good character in her children. You cannot come to, to her with a, with a problem and go back with the same problem. She always has a solution to it. So it is necessary we remember such person. We can't forget her like that. I would appreciate Mama, though I didn't get a time to meet her. But the quality she imbibed in the lives of our children is evident. As part of activities marking the 10th Remembrance Anniversary, the Doe family donated food items to Gideon Children Home Abeokuta and also visited the grave of the deceased. Late Mrs. Tolani Abeboy Doe died July 6, 2012 at the age of 56 in Abeokuta, Anthony Grandono, NTN News. May her soul continue to rest in peace. Hours of rainfall on Friday and Saturday in Lagos State has left most parts seriously flooded. The development has wreaked havoc in the state at the Oyatoki Agege axis of the city. Four people were rescued alive from a Lexus jeep that was swept away by the violent flooding. Ibrahim Fahiloye, the Southwest Coordinator of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, confirmed that two of the victims managed to escape from the trapped vehicle and were pulled to safety by emergency responders. The community assisted in the rescue of the two others. The community members were mobilized as part of the rescue operations since they had better, they had better knowledge of the terrain and this led to the successful rescue. Two people are still missing. The six persons involved by the flood hazards were reported to have been swept away when rainwater overflowed from an uncompleted canal in the area. The resident reportedly warned the people in the two vehicles, three in Lexus and another three passengers in Toyota, to the seas from passing through the road, but they were adamant and proved and drove through only to be swept away by the ferocious flood. And on sports updates, let's join our sport decks for more in the world of sports.
With few hours to the game between Nigeria Super Falcons and the Swallows of Burundi in the final Group C clash, football fans say it is about to get interesting for coach Randy Waldron and his girls as the game will either make or mar Nigeria's chances of progressing to the quarterfinal stage. According to them, the Super Falcons should execute the game with every yeah, seriousness and not African underrate Indian the Indian Burundians. The positive so far is that there has been an improvement from the Super Falcons who saw against the Bayana Bayana of South Africa in the Botswana game. But to win the Swallows of Burundi, the Nigerian ladies will have to capitalize on the gains of the Botswana game. I want to see Gift Monday start uh, to be able to pair up in front with only money. Then see other players start up. And at the end of the day, we get the maximum three points. Then move on to the semi-finals. But today, I know that victory is sure for the Super Falcons. The match, which will be played 9 p.m. Nigeria time, will be live on the NTA. Still on football, Nigeria's midfielder, Joe Aribo, has been unveiled by Premiership side Southampton as their second signing of the summer transfer window for the club. The 25-year-old Nigerian made the move from Rangers after a successful three-year spell at the club to join the Saints in a dream move. Aribo penned a four-year deal for a whooping sum of 4.2 billion naira. And finally, to cycling, ahead of the Africa Cycling Track Championship scheduled for 14th to 17th July at the Velodrome of the Moshuda Piola National Stadium, over 60 coaches and mechanics from Nigeria and other African countries are currently participating in a UCI Level 2 course for coaches and mechanics aimed at developing cycling standards in Africa. As a whole, UCI's main focus is safety um, as well as reliability of the work. So for us to develop our coaches and mechanics, it is paramount to have this kind of courses so that we can take them to the next level. Both courses are expected to last for the next five days. With Sports Update, Cynthia Ogun, NC News. And Sports Update wraps up Channel 12 News. Thank you for watching. I'm Idara Sid. I did Ogun. Good evening.